Why do you never see elephants hiding in trees? Because they're so good at it. Today, I'm going to recap a 2007 action crime film called Death Sentence. The movie begins with Nick Hume, a male office worker who lives a joyful life with his family. Nick is married to Helen Hume and has two sons. Brendan is the elder and Lucas is the younger. They go about their daily lives happily, but everything changes when a terrible incident occurs in their family. Nick takes his eldest son, Brendan, to a hockey game one time because he has been named a starter for his hockey team. Meanwhile, his wife and younger son can't be with them because Lucas has an appointment at the dentist. Nick is overjoyed to witness his son's outstanding performance during the hockey game. He is ecstatic about his son's victory. Later, Nick and Brendan talk in the car on the way home. Nick gets concerned after witnessing several sedans driving at high speeds. Brendan shares his passion for hockey and hopes to pursue it as a career in the future. He hopes to one day play professional hockey. Soon after, they realize the car is out of gas and have to pull over to the nearest gas station. Brendan goes to buy some drinks at the store while Nick refuels their car. Unfortunately, a gang shows up at the store and begins making a scene. It turns out that they are a gang of thugs attempting an armed robbery. Nick dashes toward the store as soon as he realizes his son is in danger. However, while attempting to flee, he is hit by another customer's car. Nick falls and injures his leg, making it difficult for him to walk. On the other hand, Brendan is threatened with a gun by the gangsters. He puts his hands behind his back, hoping to be released. However, one of the gangsters there orders the other gangsters to murder Brendan. The gangster states that murder is a prerequisite for joining their organization. The junior gangster complies and slashes with his machete. The gangsters fled the scene. When Nick finally reaches his son, he immediately requests assistance and takes him, lying limp, to the hospital. Unfortunately, he is unable to be saved. Helen and her younger son are emotionally overcome as they hear the news. Nick tries to comfort his broken-hearted wife by hugging her, but he himself becomes disoriented. That day marks the beginning of Nick and his family's nightmare. Helen is devastated and enraged by what happened to her son. She requests that Nick find out who killed her son and put him in jail. Nick promises to take care of this, and they try to sleep. While Lucas is still upset about his brother's death, he looks at a photo of the two of them from when they were still together. Lucas is distressed that his brother left so soon. The day after Nick's son's funeral, police arrest five teenagers suspected of being involved in an armed robbery and murder the day before at a convenience store. Nick recognizes one of the five suspects' faces right away. Joe Darley, the suspect, is still a minor. He is the number one suspect because he joined the gangster group recently. Further investigation reveals the robbery and murder that occurred at the convenience store the other day were part of a gangster group's attempt to recruit new members. To join the gangster group, each member must commit various crimes at random to demonstrate their determination and courage. Nick is furious when he realizes this, since his son had to be the victim of heinous crimes committed solely to appease the criminals. On the day of the trial, Nick is called the main witness in the robbery and murder. But oddly, Nick refuses to give his statement and instead lets the suspect go free. Nick's lawyers and the judge are stunned by the statement in question, whether Nick truly refuses to testify. He states unequivocally that he would not testify while giving an angry look full of hatred toward the suspect. Following his release, Nick secretly follows Joe Darley's daily life and observes his interactions with other gangsters. Nick witnesses his older brother Billy Darley, a gangster partner, heaping praise on Joe for his work. The gangsters repulse Nick because they take such pride in their illegal activities. It comes to light that Nick chose not to testify in court because he desired to meet Joe and punish him himself. The fact is that the sentence Joe, who is still a juvenile, would receive in court will not be proportional to the murder. Nick devises a plan to exact revenge on Joe. In addition, he retrieves a knife from his storage area and goes straight to meet the young man. Nick has second thoughts about what he has to do when he arrives at the gangster's place, but he goes ahead with his plan, kills Joe, and flees the scene. 
He did not experience any sense of relief, rather, he got even more frantic, as a result of the fact that he had just killed another person, which is something he had never done before. Nick's wife is taken aback, when she sees him come home with blood on his hands, and expresses her surprise. He decides to clean himself immediately, taking a shower. He starts crying again, because he was helpless to save his son, and can't do anything to bring him back. No matter what he did, he couldn't shake the feeling. When Helen sees that her husband is in distress, she immediately attempts to comfort him. The action shifts to the moment when Billy Darley, the leader of the criminal organization, learns from his fellow criminal, Body, that Joe has been murdered. After hearing the news, Billy realizes that Nick is the one who has taken his brother's life. Now, Billy's plan is to make Nick's family life a real nightmare. The following day, Billy gives his associate, Hiko, the order to murder Nick. Nick is going home from work, and is walking around the neighborhood, becoming aware that he is being followed from behind. He swiftly disarms the gangster, who is attempting to attack him with a machete, and then hits him with a briefcase. Nick then starts to run as quickly as he can to save his life. However, the criminal continues to follow him to the parking garage, located on the top floor of the building. Nick engages the criminal in combat while they are both in the car, and he ultimately prevails and gets away. The criminal can't escape the moving vehicle he is confined in while it is moving at a high speed, which leads to his death. Billy and his gang are unsuccessful. But Billy is still intent on carrying out his plan to get revenge. Nick's workplace is visited by one of Billy's henchmen, Bodie, who is tasked with delivering a package to Nick. Billy threatens Nick, who says he will kill all of Nick's family members. Nick immediately returns to his house, after receiving a package containing scribbled pictures of his family. He is taken aback by the gravity of his situation. Now, not only is his life in danger, but that of his entire family. He panics and calls the police to request protection for his home and family for the next 24 hours. However, because there are more members of the criminal organization than officers working that shift, the police can't keep up with them. On that night, there is a massacre of all of the police officers who are on duty outside. Billy and the rest of his thugs successfully break into Nick's house. They start their search for the family right away. Nick is forced to watch the murder of his wife and son. After shooting them, Billy finally shoots Nick in the stomach, who passes out. Since Billy and his companion believe Nick has died, they decide to leave the house. Following the events, it is discovered that Nick had a chance of survival, as the bullets that were fired did not cause any damage to his vital organs. His son also survived the attack, but he suffered significant bleeding and head injuries, and is in a coma. However, his wife passed away. Nick, who is already in bad condition at the time, gets even more enraged. He then decides to check out of the hospital and return to his house. As an act of retaliation, he intends to execute Billy and every other member of the criminal organization. Returning to his house, he quickly changes his clothes and gathers all his gear, including his weapons and equipment. After that, he goes to the bank and takes out the total amount of money in his bank account. Later that night, he begins searching for the members of the criminal enterprise. Having gathered the necessary information, he then goes to a bar to learn more about Billy's whereabouts. He stirs up a ruckus with one of the bartenders, because the guy does not intend to reveal at all where Billy is hiding. Eventually, Nick attacks the bartender and pays him money to force him to reveal. He also inquires about the best place to purchase a firearm. By some strange twist of fate, the bartender points Nick in the direction of a local gangster named Bones Darley, who has a history of dealing weapons in this town. Nick goes to the gangster's place and promptly purchases a firearm, a long-barreled rifle. Bones Darley eventually concludes that the person who is buying the gun is Nick, who is aiming the weapon at Bones's son Billy. Bones, a father himself, can empathize with Nick's desire for vengeance and the anger it drives over the deaths. As a result, Bones permits Nick to murder his son, but he refuses to disclose the location of Billy. Bones is a genuine gangster, and he believes that one must pay for one's life and mistakes. After obtaining the firearm, Nick prepares with all his equipment. He goes so far as to shave his head completely bald. After that, Nick pays a visit to Billy's gangster hangout. When he finds 
one of the gangsters intoxicated with a woman, he asked the gangster to call Billy and tell him to meet at base camp. He uses the rifle he carries to kill the gangster. Billy is filled with anger because Nick is killing his partner too easily and he must stop him as soon as possible. Billy's father stops him from going to the base camp and warns him to stay at home instead of going there. But Billy doesn't care and he takes his father's life, shooting him in the head. While this is happening, Nick picks off the thugs one by one back at the base camp. He gets seriously injured due to the fight. Before Billy arrives at the base camp, Nick has already eliminated all of the criminals who are present there. Nick and Billy get into a pretty intense brawl, but Nick finally ends Billy's life, even though Nick himself suffers severe injuries. He is successful in exacting vengeance and makes his way back home, completing his mission. He staggers into his living room and starts playing a recording from when all his family members were still alive and together. He sheds tears as he thinks back on all of the memories when life was peaceful and full of happiness, awaiting his inevitable arrest or death. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.